Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video on the tropics. And so in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, activity that is taking place in the Eastern Pacific as well as the Atlantic. There is yet another disturbance identified in the Atlantic Basin that we have to pay attention to. And so before I go into details with these systems, Okay, so let us kickstart things with what is going on over in the Eastern Pacific. So looking at the five-day outlook from the National Hurricane Center, we're seeing here that we have what is now Tropical Storm Hilda. Ignacio has dissipated, so it's no longer on the map. And then we have that disturbance highlighted in yellow and another highlighted in red and so let us take a look at these systems individually so this is where we could see some development taking place and as of right now there is a 30 percent chance of that happening guys so we don't have a disturbance that is in that region just yet but when we do we will see that x to show its location and so moving on to our other disturbance here highlighted in red it is given a high 80 percent chance to develop through both 48 hours and five days so it is certainly possible that we could have a depression or possibly a storm from this area and if it does uh if we do have a tropical cyclone developing and it becomes a tropical storm it's going to be acquiring the name himena which is the next name to be used for the eastern pacific hurricane season and as of right now not a threat to land so let's go and talk about hilda now so hilda is a weakening tropical cyclone and it currently has sustained winds of 45 miles per hour and it is accelerating to the west northwest at nine miles per hour so we're seeing here that it is expected to be downgraded to a depression by later today and then by late thursday going into friday it is expected to become post-tropical and then dissipate from that point onwards so hilda doesn't really have much going on for it and so now let us take a look at what is going on across the atlantic basin so here we have not one, not two, but three disturbances as of right now. Remember that last week this time was really quiet and now we're having somewhat of a little bit of spike in activity here but let's talk about these systems and the potential for them to develop because them being disturbances does not guarantee that they will develop it is just highlighted that there is the possibility of them developing into tropical cyclones so first let us talk about uh our invest 91l currently located over the cabo verde island so this as you're seeing given a zero percent chance to develop so chances for development are now diminished completely so we're not expecting any significant development of this system here and so it is uh looking as though it might bring our intersections of the cabo verde islands here's it on satellite view but we're not expecting any sorts of tropical development to take place from that disturbance and so now let us move on to our other disturbance and so we don't see the x for this one as yet because that low pressure area is expected to emerge off the coast of africa so we're going to have a wave that is moving off Africa given at this time a 30% chance to develop into a tropical cyclone and so whenever it moves off it we're expecting a general westward movement from the system here and um, again development is not guaranteed we have this hiring dust out there which is likely to make these systems really struggle a lot so we really have to wait and see what is going to be happening but we have to really keep an eye on this system here because if it continues westward and enters the caribbean that means trouble because the caribbean is likely to be favorable or more favorable than the atlantic because there is a lot of dust that is stretching across the main development region right now so we'll have to keep an eye on that and it is not yet designated as an invest so now let's go on to our newly identified disturbance and so here we have it and it is a low latitude system and it is given a 20 percent chance to develop so development is not anticipated when it is going to be out there but when it's closer to the lesser Antilles, making somewhat of a northwestward like track that is when we could see development so that shaded area that you see is where we could have some development taking place off the system so most likely it's not going to be heading into the caribbean but it could still affect uh, portions of the northeastern caribbean i would say maybe the leeward islands puerto rico and who knows what it's going to be doing after that is it going to be affecting the u.s is it going to be just turning out to sea it's too early to tell what the outcome is going to be because again guys things may change and again this is not even guaranteed to develop into a tropical cyclone so we really have to just wait and see but once we're going to be having favorable conditions persistent across the basin for this to develop we are going to be seeing an increase in the formation chance 
And so let us talk about the favorability now. So first up, ocean temperatures. So ocean temperatures across the basin are relatively warm, just sections of the main development region closer to Africa, still quite cool. And that is one of the factors that is an inhibiting factor for or 91 l to develop because it is in cool ocean temperatures that are not going to be helping because remember, tropical cyclones need warm ocean temperatures. And so 91 l won't be getting any of that along with the Saharan dust. So that is why there is no chances now for it to develop into a tropical cyclone. But as for the Caribbean, the Gulf, very warm ocean temperatures. As we head over into off the East Coast, the Gulf Stream is looking nice. In the vicinity of the Bahamas is very, very warm as well. So if we're going to be having systems moving into the Caribbean, potentially into the Gulf, things could be very interesting to see once we're going to be having these conditions remaining favorable. Let's take a look at the wind shear map. And so the different colors here mean different shear intensities. So we have the greens meaning favorable. That is one that is accommodative of our tropical cyclones and aids in their development. We have the yellow being neutral, which means that it won't really impact our systems too much. But the reds mean unfavorable, and this is what is going to be a problem when our systems are trying to develop because once you're going to be having a lot of strong wind shear, it is just going to be cutting off those thunderstorms and preventing our tropical cyclones to really develop. And so we see here that in the Gulf of Mexico, we do have mainly some favorable shear. Uh, the Caribbean is not looking so good at least. The central and western Caribbean, but the eastern Caribbean is looking quite nice with those areas of favorable shear. And then out in the Atlantic, the shear is actually quite uh, conducive. But there we have our system just in that small region there. And so we're not expecting development until it's going to be making its way closer to the Caribbean. So it is going to be in a region of some favorable shear, but the Saharan dust is really going to be the main struggle for the system here, guys. And so let's go on to the Saharan dust map. And so there we have it. It is quite strong across sections of the main development region. As you see, going from those oranges to that red and pink shade, that is when there is a lot of dust present. And it is almost impossible for us to have tropical developments because the dust is dry air and dry air inhibits moisture and tropical sections need moisture in order to develop so without that they're really just going to be struggling and dissipating so our new disturbance is, is in a region with quite a bit of saharan dust so this is going to be the main issue for this system here so that is really going to be the main inhibiting factor for our system here but Again, once it is going to be moving into the shaded region that you saw earlier, that is that we could see some development taking place. And if we're going to be having uh, more favorable conditions ahead of it, then we will see the formation chance increasing. And so guys, that is it for this updated video on the tropics. So we really just have to pay attention to what is going on out there, especially for the Atlantic, since um, our systems, uh, specifically the one yet to move off Africa and our newly identified disturbance that could be threats to land, so we have to really watch them as time goes by and see what the eventual outcome is going to be. And again, they are not guaranteed to develop into tropical cyclones. Our Invest 91L has completely lost formation chance due to unfavorable conditions. And so I will keep you updated as time goes by on the latest that is taking place. And so if you found this video to be quite informative, please give a thumbs up. And you can also share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question. I'll try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And just remember to always be with the wise.